Well, on this uh, coffee break, I thought I'd take a little walk on the beach and uh, look at the whole subject of avoiding uh, derailment in life. Uh, the Bible talks about shipwrecking our faith, uh, talks about various people who <clears throat> messed up. Uh, Paul talks about people who were fellow workers, who deserted him, who got into problems, who uh, had all sorts of moral and character issues. And, I, and also, you don't have to be in Christian ministry for very long. I mean, I've been in Christian ministry for many years now and there's always a steady stream of reports of people who've had either moral failures or character failures and are no longer doing what God had called them to do so this rather depressing scenario has to be addressed and you think well is it inevitable that more and more people we will find failing it's quite discouraging but the Bible does give us some tips and some wise advice how to avoid it so I thought I'd just uh, have a look at it and just kind of tell you things that you know I've tried to bear in mind through the years and hopefully there might be of some help the first thing to say is that we do need to take care the Bible says take care lest you fall and the the vulnerability that we all have I think has to be ongoingly lived with it's no good thinking oh that'll never happen to me um, it even says those who are caught in sin restore them gently but take care yourself that you that you don't get tempted yourself we are all capable and vulnerable of sin and the Bible then also talks about um, temptations common to all and we might think oh, I don't think I'd ever be tempted to that I don't think I'd ever fall in that area well there are temptations common to all and if you haven't been tempted by it yet the devil is patient he will wait his time he will look for moments when you're vulnerable and it's no point thinking oh that'll never happen to me we do need to know how to face it. The Bible says when we're tempted, God will provide a way of escape. So there are ways we will not be overwhelmed, it's not inevitable we'll sin, but we do need to face the fact that we we will uh, be tempted. And uh, I think the other thing about temptation is rather than looking for one-off events, it's important to observe trends in life. Um, when David sinned with Bathsheba, he wasn't off at war in the season when kings go to war that was the issue not that there was a one-off moment when he sinned but there was a trend in his life he'd he'd stopped doing for a season what he should have done he wasn't in the right place at the right time in the right season there had been a, a seasonal adjustment the things that there'd been a trend in his life that had developed and it led to an event so I always try to look in my life at what are the trends that are occurring uh, rather than just the one-off things. Is there a trend that's unhelpful that's developing uh, that I need to take care of? Um, next is the whole issue of accountability. And accountability is not the same as answerability. Answerability means you'll ask, answer a question if someone asks it. Accountability is when you voluntarily dis make self-disclosure. You voluntarily open your life to scrutiny, to help, to comment, and that's a voluntary thing. And uh, I think there are a few levels of accountability. Firstly, there's personal accountability. Know thyself, as the adage says. So that means there are inner gauges to watch. There are uh, signs in our lives that we mustn't ignore if we find ourselves becoming uh, distracted, depressed, tempted, uh, uh, kind of all the things in spiritual life that are not going well, watch the gauges, do something about it, strengthen yourself in the Lord, take responsibility. Next there's accountability to your wife or your husband, there, there shouldn't be any secrets, we should be able to talk stuff through, work it through in a vulnerable way, an accountable way, listening to one another hearing one another. That's an ongoing lifelong pursuit no matter how long you've been married. Next there's accountability to church. Now I've always made it a rule in my own local church. I say to people if I say anything from the front ever that's wrong or you think was incorrect or shouldn't have been said come and tell me. And sometimes that's happened. In 30 years of ministry sometimes that's happened. I can think of two or three occasions where I perhaps got carried away with myself and I said something from the front that perhaps wasn't completely doctrinally wrong but it wasn't kind or it wasn't good in some ways and I then the week after someone told me I apologized and I said look when I said this last week I shouldn't have said that uh, this is what I meant but I got carried away that makes the church feel safe it keeps me humble and it also means there's accountability from, to what I say from the front it's really important um, next there's accountability to peers 
And I mean by that people who are working with you, who are not in awe of you or in some way intimidated by you, but are equal with you, carrying a load with you, and they're able to speak to you as an equal. That's really important that they you don't just ask people to speak into your life who you're their boss in some way. Uh, next, there's accountability to people senior than you. And I believe that you can't be, you can't have authority unless you're under it. And that's a lifelong thing. I look for particularly mums and dads spiritually that I make my life accountable to. Spiritual parenting, spiritual mothers and fathers are essential. Paul spoke to Timothy, he said, Timothy, my son. He even said to, uh, in, in Romans 16, he said, greet Rufus and his mother, who's also been a mother to me. Paul was mothered and fathered himself and he became a father he to Timothy and to many others he addressed people as to the fathers in the faith to the young men in the faith there there are there are maturity issues of fathering and mothering in the kingdom where we we live a life of nurturing protecting helping and uh, speaking into the lives of others in a fatherly and motherly way that is so crucial and Paul lamented the fact there were not many fathers and also by that not many mothers and I would say to anyone slightly older in the faith strive to be a mother and a father who sets an example not just in don't just talk words but live it so that people can copy it and they feel account able to be accountable to you well and the last thing I'd say um, is just on the whole thing of what happens if you have messed up and I kind of thought do I put this even on this because I don't want it to sound as if it's inevitable you will but I'm talking about the exceptions where having done everything or even not done everything something's gone wrong and I I kind of feel that the way to I feel about it is this life is like a a very delicate fabric and if we do something that derails our life or our ministry it's a big tear in a very delicate fabric and it's not easily put back together but you know Jesus is a redeemer that is his name he is a redeemer there's a song there is a redeemer someone who can put back things that have got broken and damaged and he's got great wisdom he's got patience he's got tenacity he's got delicate he's got hands that can do a delicate work in restoring something like a delicate fabric that's been ruined and you might live with the mark for the rest of your life as it's woven back into the fabric as the tapestry or the whole a piece of cloth is then is then made and, and you, you might be able to look back and see the mark but it's not the end when something goes wrong Jesus if we're humble contrite as David was and repent deeply Jesus is able to still weave our lives into something beautiful for him we might live with the consequences live with the mark and it might be that our life has to take a different turn to what it would have done but there is always hope in the Christian life and I just kind of felt this um uh, need to just do this coffee break and I hope that it's have helped to you I mean I, I, I don't claim to be an expert I'm just saying things that have kind of helped me over the years and I trust that uh, Lord keep us all uh, from derailing our lives Amen <laughs>